So here in the CC lab, I want to understand how genes in our body, in our cells, are turning on and off uh, in a dynamic manner. I try to understand how cells control the expression level of genes to address the real life problems. I try to expand the advanced microscopy that we mostly do on mammalian cells into the plant um, as a new model system. Max Planck Institute has the full capacity of the imaging techniques needed for this research, making it a best place to study my work. If I have an idea which is not in my field, then I can easily find someone who are already experts on it. I was able to, to bring in a lot of my own ideas and, and ask exactly the type of questions that we want to ask and that we are interested in. The CC lab really started when I was a junior faculty about 10 years ago at uh, MIT. I was recruited to the Max Planck uh, Society. We started the Department of Biological Physics here about two years ago with the moving of, uh, of the lab. It really is the dream job, right? You are given complete freedom and substantial resources in order to take your research wherever your curiosity will bring you. And that is how we are able to provide all these facilities at the fingertips of our students, postdocs and uh, junior group leaders. Just within the biological physics department, you get access to world-class uh, microscopes. The MinFlux, lattice light sheet, a so-called ELIRA-7, which uh, combines structured elimination microscopy along with uh, Palm Storm. This uh, C-trap microscope, which combines uh, optical tweezers and confocal imaging. And you get uh, access also to uh, sequential single molecule imaging microscope. In the Department of Biological Physics, we are trying to understand the physical phenomena that govern biological processes. In my lab in particular, we tend to focus on those processes that happen below the optical diffraction limit. These are distant scales that are smaller than one wavelength of light, yet you get the entire physical assemblies that happen. RNA polymerase II, or POR2, is an enzyme responsible for producing RNAs from DNA template. In our lab, we try to find the correlation between the spatiotemporal information of PER2 and transcriptional activity. We start to use super-resolution microscope, but usually this technique, uh, we have to use chemically dead cells. We cannot get temporal information of polymerase II. So we developed a new technique called tc -PAM. Interestingly, we found that the longer the PER2 cluster stay at gene locus, the more mRNAs are made proportionally. Large clusters of POL2 were initially um, observed in mouse embryonic stem cells, but now we know that they also exist in mouse myoblast. Years of previous studies figured out which genes are important for this differentiation process, but we don't know yet how these genes are affected by POL2 clusters. I'm using CRISPR genome editing technique to label those endogenous protein and endogenous DNA with a fluorophore, and I'm using the technique in the lab to visualize them. This will help us further our understanding of how this fundamental process of transcription is regulated in different cell types, and eventually, when something goes wrong, how to fix those problems. Super enhancers are distal DNA elements in the genome. They are hypothesized to, to directly loop to the promoters to activate genes. People have found a 200 to 300 nanometer gap in between. So this is challenging our uh, traditional understanding of actually how enhancers regulate the gene promoters. Using the single molecule imaging techniques and multicolor uh, live cell imaging techniques, we uncovered the existence of the transcription condensate in between the enhancer and uh, gene uh, location makes it a perfect bridge between the super enhancer and the gene. Compared to the mammalian cells, plants live under a wide, wide range of temperatures um, in their physiological environment. From the physics of phase separation, we know that the process of condensate formation is a temperature dependent process, and so this makes it very interesting to study this uh, in plants directly. 
I work together with, with collaborators that are plant biology experts using and leveraging the advanced microscopy techniques that we have here in the lab and apply them to, to plants. We're interested in um, similarities but also difference um, to, to the mammalian system, how plants can use condensates um, to, for example, sense the environment and temperatures. I take it to heart that when the Max Planck Society recruits a new director, it is not really just funding one specific laboratory, but it's an investment over several decades in the research field. My hope is that the resources that we have here can also become available to the broader biological physics community. Freiburg is, is an amazing place, both scientifically but also personally. After an in intense day of science, I can go out with my bike, for example, and be on the, on the local mountains and the Black Forest. When I came to Freiburg first time, I barely speak German. People that I have met are kind and warm-hearted, and they really try to help me out. As someone who came from the U.S., I like its location, which is great for traveling to explore different cultures and visit different countries. It's really great. If you are one of those emboldened, ambitious uh, young people, there's no better place for you to be than at the Max Planck Institute.